Gary Gallup poll, race relations are at a 20-year low. The majority of Americans, 57%, say that race relations are somewhat or very bad, which is amazing to me because for the past couple of decades, all of our elite institutions have claimed that all whites are racist, blacks can't leave their homes without being hunted down on account of their race, and that race is the single most important aspect of a person's identity. Given the prominence and influence of so many race-hustling hucksters, it's a wonder race relations aren't at an all-time low. I'm Michael Knowles, this is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back to my glass half full take. My favorite comment yesterday is from Zoop to Floop, who says, they no longer send me updates when you go live. You've made it. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm very pleased about that. <laughs> YouTube is not telling people when my show is live. The New York Times refuses to acknowledge that <laughs> Speechless, my new book, sold more copies than any other book. 40%. I feel like, I feel like, I've really hit something. I feel like we're right over the target. You know, this news about the race relations thing is pretty sad because I, I remember, I remember back when things were a little bit better. And I remember in part because I still have my photos thanks to Legacy Box. You've got a lot of wonderful photos of all those priceless memories that can never be recreated from years ago, decades ago in some cases. Some cases even older than that maybe. And they're sitting in a box. And you say, oh, I'll deal with them later. I'll deal with them later. Well, first of all, they're decaying right now. And with Legacy Box, you can just send them in, have them digitized by hand, get the physical photos and videos back, but then also get the digital copy on the DVD or on a thumb drive or on the cloud. That's great. But then I know what you're thinking. You say, that's a great idea. I definitely want to do that. It's very important. I'll do it later. Order this right now. Order this right now. You can send them in whenever you want if you got a busy week or something. But just order it right now. Trust me, these are priceless memories. Think about all the investments you make that are totally, you know, frivolous. Invest in your memories. Our memories constitute so much of who we are. Get started future-proofing your memories today so you can gather the family, begin the trip down memory lane. Go to legacybox.com slash Knowles to get an incredible 40% off your first order. Get it today to take advantage of this exclusive offer for 40%. Go to legacybox.com slash Knowles and save 40% while supplies last. Race relations are at an all-time low. Now what the libs will tell you, the libs who have dominated every institution for decades now, what they will tell you is the reason race relations are at an all-time low is because we're not talking about race enough. We're not having enough conversations about race. We're not focused on race enough. Now, of course... The strategy for the past 20 years has been to focus more and more and more on race and to push anti-racism and the consequences of critical race theory and various other leftist programs. So the, the proof of the pudding tends to be in the tasting. The consequence of all of these racially conscious new, new ideas seems to be a decline in race relations and yet what the libs are going to tell us is that this is just evidence that we need even more of their racial theories. Then sort of like how the, the Ibram Kendi types, the anti-racist types, beg the question, sort of how they say, well, look, if you deny that you are a racist, that is only evidence that you are a racist. And obviously, if you admit that you're a racist, that's evidence that you're a racist. So either way, you need to buy my book. Pretty brilliant marketing campaign. My point, though, on why we don't need to talk about race all the time, why it's detrimental to do that, is because there are other bad things. There are other bad things in the world than racism. For instance, so Pit Viper, which it makes the sunglasses from the 90s, remember those, the color of sunglasses? They are in a bond. They've been receiving a lot of pressure from leftist groups because apparently some evil, terrible, no good racists have worn pit vipers. So they they just they wore the sunglasses, and so Pit Vipers needs to make a statement. They made a statement specifically against the, the guy Nick Fuentes, who we've mentioned him on the show a few times, who has said plenty of unsavory things and has been entirely unpersoned because of it. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of people who say unsavory things in this country who don't end up on the no-fly list and kicked off of all major social media and not permitted to use financial institutions. And, but because of his unsavory things, he, he has been uh, unpersoned. So, 10 percent out of tweet, they said, 
New policy money received from confirmed racists will be donated in their name. Thanks for working against your cause, Nick Wendy's, and they donated to the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is a vicious, vile, hate group, if you ask me. Uh, one of the worst organizations in the country. Okay, so the money that comes from the racists, that's gonna, that's unacceptable. We won't keep that money. We're going to donate it to other groups. Are there other bad, bad groups of people in the country? So, okay, the racists, they're bad. Okay, fine. Got it. Racists, they're bad. What about the communists? What if you get money, pit pipes, what if you get money from confirmed communists? Are you going to keep that money? Communism killed, what, 100 million people in the 20th century? Vicious, anti-human ideology. You're gonna, you know, I guess you'll keep that kind of money. What about uh, uh, money from guys who cheat on their wives? Because that's bad. It's bad to cheat on your wife. Are you, you're going to take money from guys who, who uh, cheat on their wives. What about um, pedophile, confirmed pedophiles? I bet that's a, but the only way that we can talk about evil and sin in this country anymore is by talking about racism. It's considered the only bad thing. Just like it, how among political movements, fascism is the only bad thing. This is why sometimes people will refer to Antifa as fascists, or they'll refer to Democrats as fascists. They're not fascists. Antifa is made up of communists and anarchists, and those are very bad people, but they're actually not fascists. And by, by pretending that the political movement that is only ever associated with the right wing, that that's the only bad thing in the world, that plays to the leftists' hand. Speaking of communists, by the way, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, he's not a communist, but Governor Ron DeSantis now is clearly making a play for the 2024 presidential nomination. He's looking down what's going on 90 miles off the coast of Florida, and he is saying the United States ought to free Cuba. From day one, the people of Cuba have been protesting and demonstrating against the communist dictatorship in Havana. It's not because of vaccines. It's not because of these side issues. They want a new government. They want to free Cuba. And it's, I think, incumbent upon us in, in the United States uh, to be supportive of those efforts. I've called on Joe Biden. The communist regime has shut down Internet. Let's work to beam internet onto the island of Cuba so these folks have a fighting chance to converse with one another, to send what's going on to the outside world. Let's build an international coalition uh, so that the regime knows the free world stands with the people of Cuba. I think you're seeing people take to the streets here because we understand after 62 years, something is different on that island right now. We have an opportunity to really take a new chapter in history, and I think you point out in your monologue. Cuba would be a phenomenal ally of our country if it was free. They would boom like probably few countries um, in the Caribbean. It would be uh, a boon for the people of Cuba, and it would also be great for relations with the United States. So this will play very well for yeah, what up, guys? in Florida. Don't forget, he's got to win a gubernatorial election before he can... He's got to win re-election there before he can run for president. So this will play very well, obviously, lots of Cubans in Miami, a lot of people very supportive. To the people. Uh, you can yeah. get money back. Uh, you know what I'm saying? This is so important. I'm sure. I, I feel like for me as a father, all my own more into this question. So it's just time, like you said, precious and time. Let's see you around. They know you care. Yeah, they know you love them. You care. This is about love. And we're going to be there to help them get better. That's it. You know, we know all the stuff we had to go through to get to where we at. It's not going to be easy. All I want my kids to do is tell them they'll keep pushing them. Not because of the yeah. people do that, but because the American people are kind of tired of those regime change wars of empire. I think hmm. they're tired of Master P and LeBron James buzzing against.
All right, guys, I'm coming. <clears throat> What's up this morning, though? This big Saturday. <sighs> What's in the bag? So this is my laptop bag. I carry to work every day. I don't really keep shit in here. I do got a mouse. Um, hey, I've been looking for this. My drawing stuff. So I got a, a, a white pencil and a really, really good mechanical pencil and a Citron or a smudge stick or whatever. I was looking for this pencil. What else is in here? I got my digital drawing gloves. For the iPad Pro. And that way when you're drawing, you're not like disrupting the screen. Hmm. I forgot I started working on this little drawing. And I was trying to work on some animation skills. Let me see if I can. We might play with that later on somewhere. I never even
All right, my bag, everyone. <clears throat> but the internet is so popping with art right now. And I just had to share some of my art. And yeah, what else is in here? Oh, my book I've been reading. I'm a little bit less than halfway through. So I've been reading uh, Cass, The Origins of Our Discontents. And it's uh, pretty good. We're learning a lot of shit in here. Or at least a lot of the names of individuals. In different time periods. And I made the newspaper again. Which is always dope. <clears throat> the war in Iraq ran against remaining in Afghanistan. 2016 and 2020, I guess we're Iraq. We're just pulling out of Afghanistan now. This is the first thing. I mean, look, I, I'm, I'm with DeSantis on standing against the communist dictatorship, but the overt calls for an international movement to go in and to institute regime change, 
I'm not sure that that is the political moment we're in because there's so many problems here in the United States that are not even just economic problems or not even looming problems of debt, say, or, or unfunded entitlements, but real problems of crime in the streets spiking. As we said, race relations, lowest in 20 years. We've got uh, people burning down buildings. We've got people who don't trust our, our electoral systems. You know, a lot of problems here in the United States, and I strongly suspect that the candidate in 2024, the Republican nominee in 2024, is going to have a pretty strong domestic focus. I mean, obviously, circumstances can change in the world, so who knows, some unforeseen event involving China or some other geopolitical actor, maybe that could change things. But as of right now, I think the focus is going to be domestic for the people who run for the Republican, or who, who win the Republican <laughs> nomination in 2024. And we're going to have to pick that candidate, all right? We're going to have to find the best person for the job. And when you want to find the best person for the job, I would recommend ZipRecruiter. As an employer, by far, the most difficult challenge you're going to face, the most consequential decision you're going to make is personnel, who you hire. That is going to make or break your company, okay? And hiring can feel like trying to find a needle in a haystack. So, okay, you can do the old, old-fashioned way where you post your job to some job board and you throw spaghetti at the wall and you just hope that the right person comes along. Or you can do it the smart way. Go to ZipRecruiter right now for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles. You post a job on ZipRecruiter, it gets sent out to over 100 top job sites with one click. Then ZipRecruiter's matching technology will find the right people with the right skills and experience for your job and actively invite them to apply. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post there get a quality candidate within the first day. No wonder over 2.3 million businesses have come to ZipRecruiter for their hiring needs. While other companies overwhelm you with way too many options, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for, the needle in the haystack. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles. That is ZipRecruiter.com slash K-N-W-L-E-S. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Ron DeSantis, more than any governor in the country, generally speaking, has his finger on the pulse of where the Republican Party is right now. He's seen things a little bit ahead. Obviously, he's making this play right now for a Cuban vote in Florida, and he's standing against the Cuban communists, which is a little maybe out of step with where the Republican Party is because of, of this domestic focus I think the Republicans have right now. But generally speaking, he's ahead on these things. And I, I think you might start to see a shift in the way that the COVID vaccine is talked about. Ron DeSantis has led the COVID fight better than any other governor in the country. DeSantis now is actively encouraging people to go get the COVID vaccines. If you are vaccinated, fully vaccinated, the chance of you getting, so look at the people that are being admitted to hospitals, uh, over 95% of them are either not fully vaccinated or not vaccinated at all. And so these vaccines are saving lives. They are reducing mortality. Mortality in nursing homes since we rolled out the vaccines in December is down over 95% due to COVID. Mortality for elderly people since we rolled out the vaccines is down nearly 90%. And so we're proud in Florida that we put seniors first on that because they were the most vulnerable. We have 85% of our seniors that are vaccinated and about 75% of folks over the age of 50. We have no mandate. We've provided information to people, um, and, and we've uh, been very honest about any data that, that comes out. So, fair enough. That's fine. The, the, the only problem I have with this statement and this new pivot among Republicans to start really pushing the vaccine, not with mandates. He's done a good job of saying, no, we're not going to have a mandate, but still act, really encouraging people to go get it, is it hides the ball on the question of prudence. It hides the ball on the question of which demographics are most at risk here. Because you're, you're going to hear the statistic, 99.9999% of people who go to the hospital for COVID are unvaccinated now, and so you all need to get the vaccine. Get the vaccine, chief. But then notice what Governor DeSantis says. He says, the nursing home mortality from COVID he has to say from COVID, because nursing home mortality is 100%. The mortality for everyone is 100% in the long run. He says nursing home fatality, mortality from COVID has dropped 95% since among people who got the vaccine. Uh, yeah, of course. That makes sense. 
Mortality among the elderly from COVID has dropped 95% for those who got the vaccine. Yeah, that makes sense. Does that mean that an 18-year-old needs to go get the vaccine? Or should get the vaccine? No, that doesn't follow logically at all. From the very beginning, there have been people who have said, everyone needs to go get the vaccine immediately. There have been people who have said, no one should ever touch that vaccine because they're going to get 5G in their bodies and then their cell phones are going to...
on the campus. Uh, and of course that means that just statistically speaking, there will be people who are uh, vaccinated individuals who get COVID on the campus. Uh, what I announced yesterday or conveyed yesterday was what our policy would be moving forward. Uh, but no, I don't think you can expect that we're going to be providing numbers of breakthrough cases, no. On the one hand, this is hypocritical because whenever any conservative gets COVID, the left makes a big deal about this. Whenever anyone in a conservative state gets COVID, the left makes a big deal about this. So yes, it's hypocritical. On the other hand, what up, bro? yeah, of course they don't need to give us the numbers. It's not that big a deal. Their people are fine. They're fine. Okay. I know. Are you allowed to say that? I don't know, but I'm going to say that. Unless you're in a particularly at-risk group from coronavirus, it's fine. We don't need to report on how many people are getting it. We don't need to. We don't even need to report on how many people are going to the doctor from this because overwhelmingly they're recovering just fine. You saw the numbers yesterday in Australia: 188,000 tests for coronavirus, and then what was it? 800 some odd people who have got coronavirus, and then one person died from coronavirus. So we're going to lock down the country. That doesn't make any sense. That's madness. Absolute madness. And it's not even the craziest thing Jen Psaki has been talking about. I, I, actually, I think this is one of the more reasonable takes that Jen Psaki and the White House has had. No, we're not going to tell you how many people have coronavirus because it just doesn't matter. It's fine. It's a cough for most people, okay? And, and, they, and they're already vaccinated, and so that kind of contradicts the narrative that the vaccine is extremely effective and, and it's going to prevent you from getting coronavirus. Anyway, what the, the White House is much more concerned about than controlling the spread of coronavirus is controlling the narrative so that even when the guidance changes from all the genius experts, even when the new rules and the mandates and the restrictions change, they are going to be able to control the flow of information. And the White House is <laughs> this high. And they have in recent weeks. In recent weeks, they've been pressuring social Perfect. media to take a greater hand of censorship of conservatives. They've been pressuring social media to institute more serious punishment. <laughs> now they're saying that if you are banned from one social media platform, you should be banned from all of the platforms. Oh my God! Jen Psaki. No, it's this question. About yeah, we're gonna get another one. All right, House I don't know if it's the maker or the mix. Kind of stuff. All right, should we just get the White House is like going straight to waffle mix instead of like pancake waffle mix? Well, well I didn't use pancake mix. So normally, I would use like biscuits media. or something. Mm -hmm. she says, but I thinned it out. Like, cause at first I was like, well, I want to make it thick, and I think I made the batter too thick. So I took that waffle for me, and then made the second batch for you. And thin it out and it cooked better, but if you make them too thin, it don't work. If you make them too thick, it don't work. And there's not a lot of space. I need like one of them big ones because it'll like run off the side. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm finished this. <laughs> you alright, bro? Let me go uh, fix a bowl of cereal or something while I eat this chicken and waffles. <laughs> And uh, eggs uh, and strawberries. That's they fucked up. He could at least share the cheesy chive eggs with Remember, you. Donald Trump's lawsuit mm -hmm. against Big Tech is they violated his first, first meal of the day, bro. The only way that this lawsuit works mm -hmm. is if they can prove that the government is pressuring social media to act as a proxy for the government to censor people, and Jen Psaki is doing that. Consider how crazy this is. She's saying that if you are ostracized, if you violate the rule on one social media platform, you need to be completely kicked out of the public square. You need to be completely now. ostracized. Like, this is ancient, imperial, Athenian democracy. Okay. What is his name? Michael? The White House knows? is much more concerned knows? about the he knows everything. spread of coronavirus. Knows, like, Beyonce knows? The narrative so that even mm. when the guidance changes from all the genius experts, yeah. even when the new... Who are uh, vaccinated... Her last name is Saki. Jen Psaki. She sounds like an Asian woman, but she's a redhead American. Maybe she's married to? And probably got her last name through marriage. Mask. All the vaccinated people are going to die from the virus that doesn't pose a particularly large risk. Shit. I'm telling Bay how, how much I eat sardines. <laughs> All the damn time. Jen Psaki is... I sardines, oysters. No, I eat sardines every other day, bro. I think a can of sardines is quick, like... The mask mandates and the no, vaccine mandates. Some cases, and I don't even Most of the time I'm putting in my noodles, but I don't even need that. Just give me a can of sardines and a fork. I'm good. <laughs> a couple of them. Eat that bit right out of the can. Noodles, crackers, whatever you want. I'll do struggle Texas food, but sardines, that ain't for me. The state I'll fuck up some sardines, bro. Yeah, no thanks. Have to recognize that the people of Texas I'll eat some tuna, franklin beans, other stuff, but mm -mm, sardines. Without wearing any masks. We don't, need to, we don't even need to report on how many people are going to the doctor from this, because 
overwhelmingly they're recovering just fine. You saw the numbers yesterday in Australia. 188,000 tests for coronavirus, and then, what was it, 800 some odd people who have got coronavirus, and then one person died from coronavirus, so we're going to lock down the country. That doesn't make any sense. That's madness. Absolute madness. And it's not even the, the craziest thing Jen Psaki has been talking about. I, I, actually, I think this is one of the more reasonable takes that Jen Psaki and the White House has had. No, we're not going to tell you how many people have coronavirus because it just doesn't matter. It's fine. It's a cough for most people, okay? And, and, they, and they're already vaccinated, and so that kind of contradicts the narrative that the vaccine is extremely effective and, and it's going to prevent you from getting coronavirus anyway. What the White House is much more concerned about than controlling the spread of coronavirus is controlling the narrative so that even when the guidance changes from all the genius experts, even when the new rules and the mandates and the restrictions change, they are going to be able to control the flow of information. And the White House is making That's an even good. larger play than they have been in recent weeks. In recent weeks, they've been pressuring social media to take a greater hand of censorship of conservatives. Right, I'm going to start over. Pressuring with social media to institute more serious punishments. Now they're saying that if you were banned from one social media platform, you should be banned from all of the platforms. Jen Psaki asked this question about whether or not...